assalamu alaikum in today's summary class we will be discussing about the chapter of energy changes now every reaction has a change in energy whether that be the temperature increases in the environment or a temperature decreases in the environment that is an energy change and when a reaction occurs that energy change would also occur right so hum isko ab dekhte hain ki hamare paas kaun se types of hota sabse pehle we have an exothermic reaction on the left and an endothermic reaction on the right so let's discuss one of them exothermic reaction is a reaction in which the release of energy is happening or the release of energy to the environment causing an increase in temperature so that is the exact definition of an exothermic reaction exo can also be thought of as exhale matlab ke jab aap exhale karte ho to you are releasing something right so when we are discussing about exothermic we are talking about the release of energy to the environment now the examiner can ask you questions in terms of state change when a substance turns from gas to liquid to solid you are basically providing uh, the heat the, the energy is basically provided to the environment right when a gas which has high temperature or high energy is converted into a liquid the energy must have been taken away from it and given to the environment and that's the reason why it turned into a liquid and so on a liquid turning into a solid is also taking energy from the liquid so that it would turn into a solid right so that is why that type of process in a, is an exothermic reaction furthermore a combustion reaction is a fantastic example of exothermic processes because of the fact that combustion reaction is a very classic example of the fact that energy release occurs hum isko is tarike se soch sakte hain ki aur agar aapke paas koi fuel hai for example ch4 if you have ch4 and you burn it then you get co2 and h2 this burning process is an a combustion reaction and this is a classic example for a uh, exothermic reaction right so furthermore some neutralization reaction is also exothermic some aren't but some are you could say that 80% approximately are exothermic reactions but the most important thing here to grasp is the fact that the delta h is negative what do i mean by delta h by meaning by me saying delta h is negative i mean that the entire system's energy is released so for example your entire system is contained within a box okay and your reactants the ingredients you could say that you have put in total had 100 joules of energy you did a reaction on them and at the end of the day they became the products and had 90 joules of energy now where did 10 joules of energy go by recalling a simple concept from physics that no energy is destroyed we can understand that this energy must have gone out to the environment so a question is that what happened to the change in energy well you could say that your 100 joules was lost with 10 joules this 10 joules was lost and you got the products which had 90 joules within them so that means that the overall energy change is negative 10 so now you can understand why delta h is negative because the delta h is literally speaking the change in energy and since you have lost that energy to the environment that means that you have lost or a negative change has occurred now this concept is also needed to create the graphs but we need to understand something else as well and that is an activation energy now whenever a reaction needs to occur you will need to provide activation energy this is basically the minimum amount of energy needed for a reaction to take place when the particles collide so you could think of it like so that when you release ch4 the cooking gas in your um stove to the environment a reaction does not occur it does not create a combustion reaction it does not start to burn sporadically or instantly right you need to give it a spark you will provide uh, a lighter or a uh, matches uh, 
and after that when you give that energy then and only then will it react with oxygen creating that co2 and h2 basically it will only do the reaction after you have given it an activation energy or you could think of it in literal terms you have provided energy from the lighter or a matchstick so this activation energy is needed most of the time and this is the definition of it it is the minimum amount of energy needed for a reaction to take place when the particles collide so when these particles collide in order for them to bond in order for them to actually react properly you need to give them the activation energy and then when they have that activation energy they will actually create that bond now in order to create the graphs we need both of these informations now think of activation energy is the as the energy that you provide initially you need to provide this energy for that reaction to occur right so if you are providing something if you are providing something then that energy is gained in the in the system in the in, uh, container for example right so this graph is created according to that concept so let's take a look this is the exothermic reactions enthalpy change graph and we need to understand step by step what each of these things mean now this path is a very important path so basically this is showing you that as the reaction progresses you first of all need to provide it with activation energy once you have provided it with enough activation energy once it has reached this point then it can do its own magic then it can make its own bonds and it can do the reaction it can complete the reaction by itself so after you have provided the activation energy the delta h starts to happen basically now you can see that the path has decreased the path has started to decrease and gone below the reactant this has occurred because as you can see the system has changed or has reduced energy to the products initially in the reactants you had 100 joules and in the products you had 90 joules this is an example value and you will understand it further when you do some calculations and as you can see here as well this change is being observed as such aapka jo delta h hai wo negative isi wajah se hai kyunki reactant ke paas zyada energy thi aur products ke paas kam energy hai and this entire graph can be used to predict what the endothermic graph would be so first of all let's take a look at the endothermic graph or at the endothermic process itself so when a reaction absorbs energy and hence decreases the temperature of the environment that process is known as an endothermic reaction and in terms of the state of changes you could think of it as solid turning into a liquid and then turning into a gas basically so that you turn for example ice to liquid you will be heating the ice right and that is providing energy and that is an endothermic process furthermore a very good example is photosynthesis you could think of photosynthesis is the process in which we contain the energy from the sunlight in two glucose and that entire process is a very good example of endothermic process so this bond breaking we will come to later on so first of all we need to understand how the graphs would look so delta h is positive why is it positive because you can think of it as 100 joules of product reactants the your reactants in total had 100 joules and at the end of the day they became products and had 110 joules where did this 10 joules come from it must have came from the environment so since it has taken the joules it has taken the energy that means that this is an endothermic process now the graphs are quite similar initially speaking it is quite similar and you can see that first of all of course there is a hike there is an increase in energy because you need the energy for a reaction to occur activation energy is needed for every type of reaction whether that be exothermic or endothermic and here as well this process is quite obvious you give the energy you give the activation energy it reaches that point and at the end it then does 
its own magic it does its own process and the pass reaches the products by itself and as you can see the products have a higher energy than the reactants it has gained energy and the delta h or the change in energy overall is positive because of this fact so these two graphs are used in order for us to understand these two processes in a much more in-depth form now this is not all that this chapter has to offer now you have understood if you have understood the process in terms of conceptually you can now understand it in terms of mathematics and numericals so in order to do calculations we need to understand what bond energy is bond energy in simple terms is the energy of the bonds what do i mean by this i mean that if you have a substance for example you have this oxygen or o2 then these bonds have a specific amount of energy now what this energy does either you break the energy or you make that bond that is the thing that is required for us to understand with this bond energy so let's take a look it is the energy of the bond in simple terms for example we have hydrogen to hydrogen bond and the examiner has told us that 180 kilojoules per mole is its bond energy. Now, keep in mind that understanding moles is quite an important thing for you to understand this chapter because this per mole is coming in the middle. So, for example, if you have 2H2O, or 2H2 in the process or in the reaction, you will say that there, in total, this compound has 2 times 180 kilojoules or 360 kilojoules of energy contained within its bonds you could think of it in much more detail as hydrogen to hydrogen this is one and the second compound is another hydrogen to hydrogen you could think of it as this having 180 and this also having 180 kilojoules of energy both of them and that's how moles can play a part in this chapter so now let's understand what this bond energy is actually used for now you know that you can make a bond or break a bond for example you have somehow a hydrogen atom moving around in an environment and another hydrogen atom moving around in an in an environment now if these two make a bond then some type of energy change will occur or for example if you have hydrogen to hydrogen bond already then if you want to break this what would be the energy change this is what we need to understand so bond making is a process in which the energy is released this is what exothermic process is also oblivious to. you could see that bond making is the process in which you make the bonds and that's the reason why it would release the energy or it would be an exothermic process so for example if you have this type of situation occurring two hydrogen atoms coming together to make a bond then you would say that the delta h is simply said negative 180 kilo joules why because you have one mole of H2 or H bond H being formed and since it is being formed, since the bond is being made, this is an exothermic process. This is the reason why this delta H would be negative 100 kilo joules. But what if the bond is broken? If you break the bond, then you need to provide it with energy. And as we already know, providing energy is the process of endothermic, and that's the reason why you would have 180 kilojoules in positive sign as a delta H if you want to break this bond, if you want to break this hydrogen to hydrogen bond. So, this is exactly what I have written here. This bond will create 180 kilojoules per mole when it is made. You would need to break or you need to provide 180 kilojoules per mole for this bond to break and this is exactly what i've written here as well now how you would use this in a reaction is quite an interesting method 
and let's take a look at this for example you have a reaction this is your reaction ignore everything else that i've written only look at this reaction first of all you need to keep in mind that you need to balance this equation you need to make sure that this equation is balanced you have 2h2 plus o2 giving us 2h2o right let me just change this color so that it is much more distinguished than the rest okay so this is your reaction now you need to understand for this reaction to occur you will need to provide it with some sort of energy so that the bonds would break between hydrogen and hydrogen and the bonds would break between oxygen and oxygen why because we need to make oxygen and hydrogen bond together so we would need to break this bond and we would need to break this bond as well so let's take a look so bonds broken are these bonds specifically now keep in mind that the moles were very important that's the reason why i've told you that you need to make sure your equation is balanced we have 2h2 and o2 being broken these are the uh, bonds that must be broken so that h2o can be formed so we have 2h bond h and 1o bond o being broken so in total you have positive 460 kilojoules being given to this reaction furthermore the bonds made are oh you can see that if i would make the structure of h2o then this is the structure and as you can see that this entire h2o is just oh and another oh being bonded together so we would say that two oh bonds were formed right and i could describe it as such as well bonds made is 2oh which would mean that i would take the information from this graph this information is already given to you in the exam if i could highlight this properly this information is given to you in the question already if it isn't then some sort of information would be given to you to figure it out i would now tell you how, what information will be given for you to figure it out so in this situation we were given oh bonds already and so we just took that information and we multiplied it by two because we had two moles of oh being made so we multiplied that with two and we had negative 800 and this is the exact formula that i've shown you here delta h is equal to bonds broken minus bonds made this negative sign is coming only because of this because bonds made are the bonds in which you release the energy or you minus the energy so this is the reason why this formula is being given to you and if you would process this equation you would get this answer specifically now you need to keep in mind that i have taken these values in example and theoretical the examiner will provide you with a lot more accurate values and you would be able to find out through that process now for example you have not been given one thing for example you have not been given this oh so you need not to worry about it you can answer it still हम यहां पर कह देंगे हमारे पास दो OH की बॉन्ड्स हैं जो हमें तोड़ने हैं हम यहां पर कह देंगे हमारे पास दो OH की बॉन्ड्स हैं वो हमें तोड़ने हैं और अगर वो हमें ये इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं देगा ना तो वो हमें डेल्टा एच उसने दी भी हो डेल्टा एच उसने हमें पहले से दे दी फॉर एग्जांपल -340 एज पर आवर आंसर हम इसको वापस सॉल्व करेंगे हम OH बॉन्ड की बॉन्ड एनर्जी इस तरीके से निकाल सकते हैं एंड वी वुड गेट द आंसर करेक्टली सो इट डज नॉट मैटर व्हाट इंफॉर्मेशन इज गिवन एंड व्हाट इंफॉर्मेशन इज और इजंट यू वुड बी एबल टू फिगर इट आउट बाय यूजिंग योर मैथमेटिक्स प्रॉपर्ली सो दिस इज द एंटायर समरी ऑफ दिस एंटायर चैप्टर इंशाल्लाह इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो फॉर दिस चैप्टर वी विल डूइंग क्वेश्चन आंसर्स 
for specific subtopics or the types of questions that come according to this question or according to this chapter same so i hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe and also share it with your friends if it was helpful to you then it may be helpful to others as well